in a nutshell, now that they've extended the dead period to, to May 31st for D1 and D2, you know, what exactly is a dead period? A lot of people are reading what it says online and then they still can't decipher online. What exactly is a dead period? So the dead period is basically uh, a coach cannot go out and uh, in person uh, evaluate an athlete um, as well as the athlete cannot come on campus. Now there can still be um, email phone calls, of course, juniors and above, junior seniors can do that. Of course, the, the younger kids cannot. They can email coaches still. Um, they can text coaches. Those coaches just can't, can't respond to that. So really there's not a lot going on until that May 31st. It got extended from the April date till May. Now understand that even though May 31st ends, the new, the recruiting calendar still stays the same. So as softball is hopefully going to start up here, and I mean softball travel ball, that June 3rd, 4th, 5th date, um, I know Tulsa Elite has their big tournament coming up. We're, nobody is sure of where that's going to go based on what the president's plans are, based on what each state is. So that May 31st could turn into June 31st. We just don't know where it's at. But as of now, that recruiting calendar is going to stay where it's at. Coaches just can't do any, have any contact with any recruits at this time. So that becomes imperative that somebody is working on the behalf of these student athletes. Exactly. And, and, so, and so guys, that's, as Mike will tell you, there's not a ton of recruiting terms with the NCAA. There, there are, but there's not, you know, th those set of pretty standardized terms. But I would venture to say that 60 or 70 percent of the softball recruiting population misunderstand to an extent each one of the terms. And, you know, so I, I even I had a, a, a travel coach buddy of mine, really good close buddy of mine last night tell me, you know, I just don't understand how you're making it happen. The coaches can't talk to them or do anything until May 31st. So I'm, whoa, whoa, whoa. It, you know, the one thing that, you know, the caveat to a lot of this, guys, that, that I've seen a lot happening is, and we'll talk about the specific grad classes later on, um, you know, towards the end of this and how it affects each one of y'all. But the coaches are much quicker to hop on a phone call and if they're able to. And even if it's a coach that, you know, they're, it's a D2 and you're a 2024, yeah, they can't call you. But you can call them. And if, the, if they answer the phone, they can stay on the phone with you for 67 hours. You know, the, the limitation would be if they don't answer the phone, they can't call you back. And so a lot of those things are still being orchestrated. And then there's coaches right now, I would probably say 30, 40% of, of my 22s, probably a little bit less than that of my 23s. And the, the majority of the very few of the 21s that I have that are still uncommitted, they're getting, getting virtual tours set up that, you know, the colleges are making concessions to even bring in people to be able to create this thing that they have not previously done. And now we're setting up those things, but we'll talk about that a lot later, but realize the dead period is basically the in person. If you think dead period in person it, to them in person, you're dead. You know, it, it does, it does not stop phone calls. doesn't stop emails. It does not, does not stop virtual tours. There, there are certain caveats to it about involving the admissions office and all that, but that's stuff that y'all don't necessarily need to worry about um, unless that time comes.